Hi everyone, welcome to your third tutorial on providing plugin support for your .NET application. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a plugin. So let's get started. First, we're going to create a new project. It's going to be a class library again, and we'll name it um, plugin date. Once you've created that, you should create a class called class1 for you, and you'll have this. Uh, you should look like this. Um, we're going to right click on references, go add reference, then go browse, and then look for where you have saved your plugin interface. So, plugin interface, the same as you did in your um, program, main program. So, we can add a using statement to plugin interface. Oops. And remember in the last video I said every plugin has to implement a m class called main so your program knows where to start. Well, we're going to have to change the name of class 1 to main. And now we're going to um, implement the interface called iPlugin. So type in iPlugin with a colon before it, then right click on iPlugin, go implement interface, then go implement interface again. And it should create the three methods that we have implemented in our interface for you. First of all, this plugin is going to return the date. So we're going to go return. date time dot now dot to long date string um, this plugin's name is going to be date and now I've actually made a little mistake here I've created a method called set for which will set something in our plugin but I have not put in a method to retrieve that variable at all so to do that what I'm going to do is create a new string called string varab verb and I'm going to return this string with the get information method so I'm just going to go space Oops. then we're going to also add VA Oops. verb <laughs> and in set verb we're just going to set verb to whatever our user puts in. And that's actually it. That's how simple building a plugin is. So once you've built your solution, so F6, then right click on your project and go open file in Windows Explorer. Then navigate to your debug folder. Then you're going to copy plugin date dot dll to your plugin host um, folder so at, or wherever you have saved your plugin host we're going to paste that in there and now if you run your um, plugin host dot exe or whatever you, your name <coughs> plugin program is you'll see a plugin in there called date and you can set the variable but obviously because there's one thing there I can't retrieve get information again so I've actually created a bunch of other plugins one that's going to retrieve the time one that's going to generate a random number and one that shows you what operating system I'm on so we're going to copy and paste those in the plugin folder as well. 
and then we're going to run the plugin host.exe again. And now, as you can see, we have multiple plugins. Let's set the variable to 5 or 5. Um, as you can see, that retrieves what operating system I'm on. This is a, just a random number. Let's set the variable for that as well. And the time now is 11, 10. So, we go back to our date, and as you can see, we've got the variable there. In a random number, you've got the variable there. And in our time, we've got the variable there. So, this is a really good way of extending your program, or if it's a large program, because C# has to compile everything to update itself, you can put in plugins, which will make updating a lot easier. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.